Hey y'all, Data Guy here. So today I got a viewer requested video that I've wanted to make for a while, and that is on what is change data capture. Um, and so when I first thought about what this was, I thought it was like data slowly changing over time, and that is what it is, but not in the way you might think. Um, and so that's why I thought this video would be good because I wanted to learn more about it, figure out all the distinctions, and then relay that information to you now that I have. Um, and so to just break it down to the basics, um, change data capture is just a technique that is designed to identify and capture changes made to your data, whether those you know are inserts of new records, maybe a new customer entering information, uh, a update to an existing record, maybe you saying, hey, you know, we've sold 10 of these items, now there's only 20 left. Uh, maybe we deleted a customer because they churned and we're no longer selling to them. Um, and while these might just seem like, hey, you know, this is just the natural flow of data, obviously, you know, there's going to be these operations. Why do I need to track them? Um, well, I'll get to that in a second. Keep you on the, on the, on the little edge of your seat. Um, but what this is, is, you know, change data capture is capturing all these different operations so you can keep a finger on the pulse of your data, tracking every beat, every rhythm, feeling the beating heart of your business, and that is your data. Um, and so why this is important is because, you know, as all these operations are happening, you know, new customers are coming in, bringing in data, you have your data analysts maybe updating some old records, uh, you have people deleting information to try and save, maybe an intern comes in and says, hey, I want to save all of our, I want to cut our database records in half. Why do we need all this old data? Let's prune it. Uh, and so capturing all these so that you can both revert and also understand where data changes are coming from uh, is important because if you don't have a structured way to manage and track how your data is being transformed over time, you can end up with just kind of a gobbledygook soup of just random data points. You don't understand how you got here. You know, you know that you initially were tracking these three fields of customer information, and now each customer has 20 fields, and seven of them are just weird alphanumeric uh, tracker codes that don't have a uh, proper column heading. So having changed data capture is really valuable and crucial as the amount of data you're consuming really starts to explode, especially if you're trying to make sure that that data is of high quality for you know, any kind of artificial intelligence or machine learning workflows. And so if you don't have a change data uh, mechanism in place, you know, you can have a scenario where like, hey, maybe different uh, systems have different versions of the same data. You have inconsistencies. You don't know which one to reconcile to. And it just leads to a lot of operational challenges and potentially, you know, obviously bad business insights as well. Um, and then there's also the issues of performance, having different versions of data, having to constantly process them to get, get them aligned with each other. Um, and also maybe if you need to revert back or you need to, you know, you're changing data unnecessarily, you're just creating queries and, you know, creating compute costs that don't need to actually exist. Um, and also security. If you don't have a good grip of where your data is coming from, where your data is being stored, how your data is being updated, and also things like audit logs to track how that data is changing. Uh, you can have maybe someone slips in a couple extra records. Oh, whoa. I actually, there's actually was someone that did this that put in a fake business record into their company's payroll and was actually just paying themselves uh, off of, you know, because they just slipped a new employee ID into their company's database and no one was checking because there wasn't a change data capture system there. So it can have real consequences um, as well. So to combat, obviously, change data capture, there have kind of emerged a few different strategies um, within, you know, the modern day ecosystem to avoid these kind of situations. Um, and so the first one is log-based uh, change data capture. And this is, you know, both sophisticated and efficient method that will directly tap into all of your database transaction logs. So you're looking at, if you're, you know, you can see within every database, there's obviously logs about, hey, where do these change occurs? Um, and so what log-based change data capture does is basically maintain these logs from all of your different systems to keep a record of all your different changes um, to ensure, you know, number one data recovery in case of failures. And then what log-based CICD does to do this efficiently, instead of constantly having to query these change these data ta base tables for changes, the log-based uh, change data capture will read these transaction logs, identify and capture any data modifications, and then only look and identify and track those. So it won't track kind of all the sustainer system messages and things like that that are just constantly being let, uh, fed through those database log systems. Um, and so this has a few examples. Um, you can 
uh, have a low latency solution. You know, this capture changes almost immediately as they happen because it's constantly reading the log, but it's only uh, reading in things, you know, bringing in queries or changes that actually have happened. Um, and so that keeps the load on the underlying source database pretty low. Um, and then because it operate, operates on the log level, it's unobtrusive. It's not actually interacting with any of the actual database operations. It's just looking at the resulting files of those operations. Um, so you don't actually have to you know, plug into the database and track those changes manually. Um, the one downside of this approach is because you know you're using change data you're reading log files log files can be incredibly complex if you want to have frameworks to actually properly parse them and read them in kind of an automated way you're going to have a need to have a deep understanding of how that database works um, and so it can be a bit more complex to set up than some of the other methods that i'll also go into here so the second type of change data capture you can employ uh, if log base is too complex, you know, you're not used to working logs, whatever reason you don't want to go with that approach, uh, you can also use trigger-based change data capture. And what that will do is employing database triggers um, like an insert, an update, or delete to monitor and capture data changes. And so what a database trigger is, is a set of instructions that automatically execute whenever uh, a certain event uh, occurs. And those events would be something like an insert, uh, an update, a delete operation. And so when that data change event occurs through one of those uh, triggers, the or through one of those data change events, then the trigger fires, which will capture and store whatever operation that is in a separate uh, kind of shadow data table. So you can see here when an insert operation, you know, importing Carlos it, uh, comes in, then we have that insert operation tracked in the shadow table. Um, and you can see the destination actually as well, where that data table was changed. Now, the advantage of this is, you know, as opposed to near real time data capture from log based, uh, this is true real time change detection, making sure no modifications go unnoticed. Um, but with this advanced level of detection, there are some considerations you have to keep in mind um, because this op is operating the database level. This can introduce, introduce some significant compute overhead to your database, um, which can affect the performance of your queries. And also, when you start to maintain a large amount of these triggers, it can you know quickly kind of spiral out of control and become uh, more of a burden than a blessing, especially when you have a database you know with lots of different tables, many frequent changes. Um, it can kind of spiral out of control pretty quickly. So just something to keep in mind if you're thinking, hey, maybe this approach is better for me. Um, there are some downsides along with the upsides. And so both of those two approaches were too much for you. There is a third one um, that was even hard to find examples of because it's kind of been phased out as it is a very kind of simple, more antique approach with smaller data sets. Um, and that is polling based data change data capture. And so what that is, is a much simple approach that just involves periodically querying the source database to detect and capture changes. Um, so let's say you know, every day I do a quick query on the database and say, hey, any records or changes between you know, the past 24 hours, uh, collect those and then save those changes in a backend database. Um, so it'll compare you know, the current state with the previously recorded state. So it'll match those two and then recording changes that they detected between you know, those two states. Um, so pretty good at capturing, you know, changes in bulk. Obviously, if something, you know, gets deleted and re-added from the same day, it wouldn't capture that. Um, so that might introduce issues. Uh, maybe not. I don't know, honestly. Um, I guess maybe if you were like, just needed to do something tricky within the day and then delete it up before the end of the day, you could kind of get around the polling based actually capturing it if you are a bad actor or something. Um, and so the only primary advantage of this is just it's much simpler than the other two to implement. Um, you're literally just taking a snapshot of your database and doing a, a uh, diff between that and the previous day's database. So it's not super complex. Um, and so it's really only suitable for systems where real-time change detection is not a strict requirement, maybe like a uh, cold database that you're only updating uh, once a week. Um, and so Again, like I said, you'll miss any rapid successive changes that, that might occur between those polling intervals. Um, and as you get to larger database sizes, maybe you're doing this on many different database tables, you have to maintain snapshots of the previous day uh, and then do those comparisons every day. It can be resource intensive. So capturing them more on an ad hoc basis is just becomes more efficient at scale. Um, so it's kind of like the economies of scale there, I guess. Um, and also it, it does depend on your use case. So you know, as you kind of might have seen, each of these has its strengths and its weaknesses. And so really the challenge is going to be, hey, what 
are you best most capable of what is going to be the easiest thing for you to implement and something that you'll understand because if it's not something you understand and can maintain and that you can have good documentation for it's almost not worth having because when it comes time to actually go back through it you're not really going to know what's going on there um and so what i really kind of wanted to sum this up with was that a change data capture isn't really as technical of a process as i initially had thought um, you know, I thought this was going to be, you know, hey, I have to implement all these crazy mechanisms and frameworks to detect change data capture and then alter my uh, database to reflect it. And that's really not what it is. It's just almost like it's similar to lineage and that you want to detect, hey, how is my data being changed over time and by which uh, actors within my organization or external actors? Um, and so hopefully this video has helped you understand its importance, uh, understand maybe some of the challenges that you might face with that, but also give you some frameworks that you can use for developing your own strategies for implementing it in your organization. Um, and so I hope this kind of intro video has given you some some help, something to think about. If it has, like and subscribe. If you didn't get something out of this video that you were hoping to see, drop it in the comments below and I'll make a follow-up video with any kind of content I missed. Um, or any other thing you want me to make, drop in the comments and I'll make it. As I said, this is a viewer request video and I think all last week I did them too. So I'm gonna keep pumping them out. Um, and without further ado, that's all I got for you all today. Data guy out. Peace.